Yes. Yeah. Just just one line quick, one last question, Julian. I get asked this all the time. Why on earth did governments around the world go for this ludicrously new genetic product rather than a tried and tested antigenic vaccine? Yeah, well, see, that's I, I've been trying to work that out for quite some time because. So have I. It, like we there's know, some, that, there's something weird going on here, isn't there? Yeah, it, it, there's there is a lot. And I had it. A long discussion with a, a, a Dr. Lisa Johnson on the weekend. She yeah. uh, also contributed for our COVID-19 Royal Commission terms of reference, proposed references. Um, and she's very, very knowledgeable in the area of transhumanism. And I was reading uh, four manuscripts that she's getting ready to publish in that area. And the decades of military industrial military uh, research and money that's been going into transhumanism dating back into indeed the 60s uh so peter mcculloch in one of his lectures <laughs> points out that this wasn't new darpa through its adept project um 10 years prior to 2020 had already put it up on their their board saying we are going to develop mod rna products which can be uh, rolled out super quick within one year as a medical uh, countermeasure, right? So there was nothing new about it. They always knew about this this sort of technology platform, but they weren't able to safely deploy it. Well, they did on this occasion because they had politicians spruiking it as safe, even though it was anything but. So there's been a lot of pre-planning going back decades, and it appears to be a military-industrial complex thing, I'll just say thing, um, to get people to take this new technology platform. Now, we all know about the Wuhan lab and yeah. Zheng Li was called the Bat Lady, okay? Mm. She was one of the chief scientists. Now, <clears throat> let's, I don't think she's the bad person, everybody. I think she's just a straight up scientist who was doing jobs um, commanded of her. You know, she was communist China for Christ's sake. That's, she gets orders, um, not suggestions. But she and her team actually identified very, very clearly SARS-CoV-2 virus um, in February of 2020 and released a paper published in March. Yes, in March of 2020 saying, yep, we've seen it. This isn't really a big deal virus. And all it requires is a very, very um, uh, <clears throat> uh, safe, and indeed it was safe, nasal spray um, with this such and such protein in it. And I did the research on this protein for this nasal spray and super harmless to humans. You know, we're talking about ivermectin safety type stuff. This compound's been around for decades and decades. And her team said, look, the world's got nothing to fear. They just need to take, you know, a pump of this maybe once or twice a day. It can be used as a preventative and also an early treatment. And no one has anything to worry about. Okay, there's no, there's no threat. That paper was buried. That paper was buried. And then you get other people like Pierre Corey without the benefit of that paper and Peter McCulloch come out and say, uh, we're juggling, we're thinking uh, 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 hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin in different combinations. Yeah. And I was there in 2020 hearing their messages, but that was beaten down, beaten down, horse-paced. We know the controversy. We know the controversy. It was, it was shot down. It was shot down in our country as well. TGA, uh, essentially outlawed. And, sti and still is being. Yes, yes. And so it, there was just this... By all costs, it must be the, these drugs and nothing else. So there was this determination. This wasn't just for profiting. Like we know that Bill Gates, for instance, invested fifty-five million and made something like you know one point five billion dollars uh, in the result. Pretty shrewd uh, investor. Yes. Well, he was invited in late 2019 to purchase an incredible quantity of Moderna shares. Uh, very, well, very good. Our, 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 our prime minister was in a trust fund in, in 2013. Yes, yes. He bought yeah. half a billion dollars worth, $500 million worth of Moderna. Very far-sighted investor, it must be said. Well, yeah, I'll call a spade and a spade. He got an inside tip. It's called insider trading. Um but my point is, when you look at characters like Moderna, uh, sorry, Bill Gates, he didn't need the money whatsoever. Absolutely no. didn't need the money. And it's like he was part of the – he was there behind the marketing push it's to get all these regulators to just kill off ivermectin, kill off hydroxychloroquine. We've got to have the populations take this stuff. 
not for money. They've just got to take this stuff. What's the reasoning? Hey, we've just opened up a pretty disgusting chest of secrets here today. They knew about the reverse transcription. They knew about the DNA contamination. They knew these things. We can show this, John. They knew about it. They wanted these genetic, unnecessary materials into people. As Kevin McKernan was saying in a, a Twitter conversation, somebody observed, it's like, well, why didn't they just, instead of DNA and mod RNA, why didn't they just make the spike protein itself? Why did as they, they did in as they did in China? No one in China's had an mRNA vaccine. That's right. They didn't. Why did we get inject? Why did people get injected with mod RNA when they only needed to give us the final product, the actual yeah. spike protein and why, encapsulated? And, and, and what, what, why did the Chinese government have sufficient insight to import, as far as I know, zero doses of mRNA vaccine That's and right. to use their own yeah. antigen vaccine? Kevin McKernan went, went one step further and he said, "Yeah, we only the population only perhaps needed spike protein." But it didn't even need to be wrapped in a lipid nanoparticle and biodistributed. It only needed to be in a nasal spray in terms yeah. of delivery mechanism. Okay. And when you talk about the Chinese, hey, the Chinese got this whole theater going with all their fall over people videos that scared the world in early 2020. And we subsequently found out that they were all staged. They yeah. were actors. They were actors. And the Chinese government didn't step in once to say, oh, no, these are just actors. They're just trying to scare you. They didn't go and do that. They helped proliferate those videos. And then, as you point out, they said no to the solution that was given to the Western world. So this was something that was geared with Chinese. And so I'd have my further view saying, Look, China's the biggest creditor in the world. It can't afford to crash the market with its US bonds, but it can go to its biggest debtor and say, help us slip some genetic material into your population uh, because we want to see what happens and we also want to kill some of you. Because that's what's happened, John. We've had untold millions of deaths because of this product rollout of these mod RNA products, as well as the AstraZeneca, which is a different mode of action, undeniable millions of deaths and undeniable countless further millions of injured people. And now we've got the looming frontier of what's this genetic integration going to do. And just to be clear, yes, we do get the genetic diseases sort of immediately and they'll be continue to unravel because these things don't immediately trigger disease. They take a while for genetic diseases to get up to steam. And sometimes it takes three to five years for the final manifestation in terms of disease and illness to be seen in individuals. But when it comes to germline integration with ovaries and testes, you see that in the next proper full-blown generations, those that make it to term and D, because this stuff uh, really does pose a, a jeopardy to you know the ability to sustain life anyway. Um, but that's the next round that geneticists who are looking at the same material that we are are saying, look, that's where the, we're going to see some massive impact. And what we are now responsible for doing is when we see, assuming we do see that genetic impact manifested in the next generations, we have to keep everyone's memory clear and say this isn't just spontaneous. It goes back to something that occurred in 2021 when billions of people were asked to take these things or forced to. Julian, we're going to put links to your sites, your publications underneath this. There'll also be a donation site for legal expenses in the UK. And I know you've been working flat out, and that's an understatement for about three years now without getting paid for this. So, I mean, your, your service to the Australian people and the people of the world is, is uh, truly impressive and, um, well, thank you, thank you for doing that. And, it, and but these are the rewards is to share the, the critical information with persons like yourself, because my work means nothing unless it's shared and understood. And you're such a fine educator, Dr. John Campbell. It's, um, <clears throat> this is payment. Well, uh, let, let, let's, let's, it hope it, let, let's hope it gets out there. Um, 
We might need to put this out in bits. We'll have to see. Um, <laughs> we've, we've, there's been, shall we say, I've had recent distribution difficulties, shall we say. Uh, yes, I think I understand. With, where, with, with, with some recent videos, but um, the attempt will be a noble one. Okay. And there's more we need to talk about, Julian, but, but for now, um, thank you very much. It's good evening from me and it's good morning from you. Good morning from me <laughs> and good evening to you. Um, and and, and we'll talk again soon. And thank you so much. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you.